So today we'll be installing a bunch of these things into a brand new house. These are all Z-Wave devices. I find them to be much more reliable than Zigbee and Wi-Fi. First up, you have the motion sensor from Fibero. It is also a light sensor, so it can detect whether the room is bright or dark. This is very useful because it can also detect if there's motion and if there's motion and if it's dark, let's turn on the lights for instance. It's also a temperature sensor. That way you can use it as a fire alarm, almost like a fire alarm. Next, you got the standard door and window sensor. In the picture, it looks small, but in actuality, it is quite big. This is the sensor itself. This is the uh, magnet. So if the um, magnet moves away from the sensor, it will know, it will trigger to let you know whether it's open or not. So here's a minor update to the uh, video earlier. The Fibero Z-Wave plug is not compatible with Home Assistant. So no matter how much I worked on it, how, many, how much configuration I play around with it, there's no way it was going to be compatible. I contacted the company and they gave me a different one to swap it out with this power switch, Z-Wave, from Zeus. It is uh, much bigger than the Fibero. Here's the plug that you plug into the wall. This is the uh, Z-Wave Intelligence Module, I guess. And here's the uh, plug where I will plug the siren in. If you manually have to turn on and off, there's the button right here. It doesn't do anything right now because it's not plugged in. There's no battery unit inside. Next, you need a Z-Wave stick. This is one of the best Z-Wave stick I've ever used. This lets you talk from the uh, Raspberry to all of these Z-Wave devices. Of course, you also have the Raspberry. In this case, we'll be using the Raspberry Pi Model 3B. You can also use the Raspberry Pi 4, but I find that it's a little bit overkill. You also need a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. So that way it will load up the um, operating system onto the Raspberry Pi. So all of this is about uh, Four doors, four door sensors, three motion detector, the Raspberry Pi, the hub, the, uh, the Z-Wave uh, stick that I showed you earlier, the siren. All this system can be had for about $500. The last piece of the puzzle is this siren. It is massive. Here's my hand. Here's the Zeus box earlier. Here's a normal power plug. So you can see how big it is. It is also extremely loud. It is 150 decibel, which is massive. A normal house alarm system is about 85 dB, and this one is 150 dB. There is only two cords. So I splice it with a regular AC power cable that plugs into a regular plug. But this will be plugged into the Zeus Z-Wave plug. So if anything goes wrong, if the alarm is triggered, then this switch, Z-Wave switch, will turn on. Do not plug this in while you are in the room because you might go deaf, plug it only into the Z-Wave. And then make sure, of course, the Z-Wave is off before you plug it in, of course. And then go to your home assistant and then turn this Z-Wave on to give it a test. 
but I would never plug this in directly into the normal outlet because you might go deaf. It is extremely loud. Let's head on over to Home Assistant to see how we can configure everything all together. I assume that you know how to find your Raspberry Pi on the network. If you don't know how to find your Raspberry Pi, just open Advanced IP Scanner. This is a useful way to find all your devices on a network. Hit Scan. You'll find a bunch of devices that will pop on. on. The manufacturer will be Raspberry Pi. I have a bunch of Raspberry Pi, but I know for sure in this instance it is 192.168.179. Going into the IP address, colon 8123, it will ask you to log in. And once you log in, click on Supervisor, click on System. Go down into the three dots, go down to hardware. Here you'll find the serial ports. Take a look at this. And in the configuration page, we'll be adding this line only when it asks for it. So I'm going to copy into my notepad and then we will add it. Go into configuration, go into integration, add integration, go all the way down to Z Wave. Make sure that you paste in the USB uh, path, which we copied earlier before. Submit, and this will take a while for it to add. Looks like it added successfully. It looks like it was able to detect the uh, Z-Wave stick. The first thing we're going to add is the door sensor. Go into the uh, Z-Wave network management. Click on Add Node Secure. On the uh, door sensor itself, pull the battery tab. If you pull the battery tab already, then you should pop it out take the battery out and put the battery back in. If it did successfully add, then you can click on, go back into the uh, integrations, click on Z-Wave and you'll see two devices. Looks like it added itself already. So let's see. There we go. The first one, the first indoor door sensor has been successfully added. I highly recommend writing the uh, numbers in the back. So for this one, we'll be labeled number one. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on this settings. The name will be door one. Let's put a magnet right next to it and see what change. So we can see change from off to on. Off is when it touch the magnets and on is when door is open or it's not touching the magnet anymore. Back to off, one more time. I'm going to rename it because this doesn't make any sense to me. I'm going to rename it to door one. This time the uh, alphabet version, not the numeric version. Go ahead and continue to add all the other door sensors. 
So right now I have door 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's click on number 4 to see what's going on. Number 4, I renamed them accordingly. And right now the uh, sensor is on because the magnet is not nearby. Let's put the magnet nearby and it should come off. And it did become off. Very good. Let's go on and continue with the motion sensor. To install the Fibro motion sensor, it's a little bit tricky. Twist to remove the cap, you'll see the battery. Next to the battery, you'll see a small button. Press it three times to add it into your Z-Wave network. So let's do one from the beginning again. Click on Configure your Z-Wave. Click on Add Node Secure. Pop off your uh, motion sensor cap. Double click, uh, triple click on the uh, small button, and then wait until it it is solid blue. If it's solid blue, that means it's, it has been added. And hopefully, once it's added, it will look something like this. You will see a bunch of sensor just added in. Let's click on renaming it as before. Motion 1. I am closing the cap. Let's see which data is used for us. Useful for us. We can always go into the Developer mode, developer tool, go into states and click on type in motion to see what's going on. So we are going to the binary sensor. So if there is movement, then it will be on. I'll wave my finger in front of it. There we go, it's on. If there's no motion, then it should turn back to off. It looks like it takes about 10 to 20 seconds for it to go from on to off. On the uh, sensor itself, if there is motion, it will turn itself red. The LED will be red. And in the option, in the Z-Wave option, there's, a, uh, there's an option to change it. So that way, it doesn't, the LED doesn't turn on. I call this the ninja sneak mode. So if you walk in front of it, you'll never know if it has detected motion or not. I don't recommend using this mode because um, first of all, you don't know if the motion sensor is working properly or not. I just let the LED turn red by itself. In order to add it to Home Assistant, all you have to do is go into the Z-Wave integration click on add note secure and then plug this in immediately it will automatically add itself in there's no button to press like as the other units where you have to press it three times fast or something like that this one all you have to do is plug it in and it will add itself <laughs> 